Hey everyone, it's James from the Fit RV. We're here at Lithionics in the lab and we're tearing stuff apart. We sure are. All right, so we've got two batteries here and one of the things about Lithionics, Lithionics batteries, and I'll just be honest with you, they're expensive compared to competitors' batteries. But there are reasons for that and I think that's kind of what this is going to show. So this is the 320 amp hour battery like what's going to be in the Winnebago Echo, right? It is, yes. Okay, and this is, we'll just call it a competitor battery. Right. And there are a number of differences in the way they're built and constructed that are sort of responsible for that increased price and also the increased safety margin and you will listing that you can get with the Lithionics battery. So, let's have a look. The first thing I notice right away is that there's a lot more. Each one of these green blobs is a battery cell. And so in this battery, they've got one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three. I don't know, they got like a couple hundred mm -hmm. cells, yep. it seems like. Each one of those has to be wired up or make contact in positive yeah. and negative, right? So each one of these is welded to this nickel plate here. And each one of those is a potential, you know, failure point. Uh, these are assembled in blocks. So each one of these blocks is 3.2 volts. And then in series, you get your four in series. To get 12. Uh, to get 12.8 volts, nominal. Uh, but when we see like in these kind of constructed batteries, it's just, like I said, the amount of uh, failure points is high. Um, and then we see, you know, some strange, to us, uh, uh, assembly methods where, you know, there's a load-bearing surface that's a conducted pathway with plastic in between. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big no-no for us. You don't put plastic on something that might get warm because plastic yields under pressure. Right, which, it's going to get which, warm, it's going to deform, and right. then you're going to lose torque on that Correct, bolt yeah. or whatever. And then next thing you have a higher resistance, which creates more heat, and then it's like a thermal runaway kind of event. Right. So one thing I'm noticing is we've got a lot of small, multiple smaller gauge wires mm -hmm. here, I guess connecting, what is this, to the BMS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas here we've got just three very large gate was that two watt yeah. wire yeah this is two watt so we have the positive and then we have the negative from the lithium core mm -hmm. it goes through the bms and then it goes back out to the terminal like the positive negative terminals so it's just a little higher quality on the wiring fewer points of failure a lot the, fewer because we have these large format cells right. here right so this is like as you said a couple hundred cells over here we have 12 cells uh there's fewer weld points there's fewer moving pieces. This whole thing is banded together as one solid block. Right. Whereas this has a little bit of flexibility in it. Right. Uh, and then, I mean, there's the case, obviously. We have, a, we have an aluminum case, which is going to act as like a, a heat sink. So in this case, th is, this is going to get, or potentially, if it was passing the same current, could get potentially just as warm as your, as your or could it? Is, is well, your this BMS. is a 100 amp rated BMS. Okay. Or ours is 200 conservatively. Okay. Uh, we can really hit 250 on this, but 200 is the rating we publish. Okay. So we, the way we're able to do that is with you know just higher quality uh, MOSFET electronic switches. Okay. And then this whole heat heat sinking aluminum case. You know the BMS is going into the case where this the heat kind of pools in the plastic case. Right. It, it can't get out like besides like, just natural convection through plastic now. So. Uh, there's there's huge benefit to that kind of construction versus insulated in a plastic case. Right. So, and so that's heat getting out. But what about like keeping the battery warm? If you were to put a heater kit on this battery, on this one, I'm getting this one. Does this one have it? Yeah. The heater kit on the bottom. It has the heater pad on the bottom. Right, which is actually physically in contact with the cells. With all the cells. If you had there's no way to do that here. Yeah. If you had to heat this up, you know, it would be in the plastic case over here. And then heat would kind of just have to slowly kind of make its way in. A lot of it would be lost outside of the case for as much as is going into the case. Interesting. Um, another, you know, limiting uh, design feature we see on these is just the conductive pathways are really not up to the rating of what, you know, they're publishing. So this is supposed to be able to do, I, I believe, 100, 150 amps continuous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the main positive, so all, you have all your... Your, your cells on the, this side, or the, or the positive side, are welded to this nickel plate, which travels up to this copper bar. Good so far. Right. But then, here's the positive connection, you know, for the, the customer when they're wiring up the battery. Remember the bar's on this side. All right, so <laughs> it has to go through the bolt head, down the bolt, 
to the nut, then back to this, this brass terminal. And when you look at, you know, the size of this bolt, it's basically equivalent to a six gauge wire. Six gauge wire, 40, 50 amps continuous, that doesn't match with the rest of the ratings of this battery. So this right here is a huge choke point, basically. Well, and there's no off switch either, right? right. There's yeah. no way to turn this off. Right? There's no it's way to turn this off on. either. Even though technically all the components, the electronics here can turn off, mm -hmm. there's no switch that's just connected to be able to do that. And it's just, we see a lot of these cost savings features, I guess you could say, that is you know, like 90% there. Why not just finish it with like, you know, $5 of parts? Okay. But now at the end of the day, this will deliver power, right? Correct. But we've got, we've got a battery tester device here. So, so this will give us a very accurate battery resistance. It actually uses a one kilohertz impedance sine wave okay. to get that, that kind of accuracy. So we can turn this battery meter and on. By resistance, you're talking like the internal resistance of the internal battery. Internal resistance of the whole assembly, not just the lithium core, but also as it flows through the BMS. Ah, okay, so any... To any, the point where you're actually connecting and... and any places know. where it's not torqued down that's going to affect it or anything's missing a well Correct. or something like that. Correct. Okay. So we can we could just put this on here and, and see, you know, what kind of reading we get for the resistance of this battery. So we've got the negative on this side. 7.96. So 8. 8. 8 milliohms. So. 8 milliohms internal resistance for this battery. Correct. So here's our 12V320. Turn her on. And the winner is. 2. 2.1. So. Four times less resistance. Roughly, yeah, roughly yeah, four, roughly times, four less times less internal resistance. But this, that's a 100 amp hour battery. This is a 320. That's not really super True. fair so or accurate. You got, a, you got a smaller battery? Yeah, we let's do a similar size battery. We have this 12V130 over here. This same form factor. Yeah, same form factor, very similar size, uh, 130 amp hours. Is there anything I need to do? Can I do this? Sure, you can. Let's turn it on. And we can remove these little protective caps. You're just going to push straight down on the terminal surface. And we are at 3.38 milliohms. 3.398. So. Cool. All right. So yeah, again, at least, at least twice as more, right. twice as much internal right. resistance. Now, why does the internal resistance matter? So resistance, when you're flowing amps, through anything is creating heat. So charging and, this battery up and heat, it's acting it, as a resistor. And right, right. And heat is, you know, it takes a lot of wattage to make any kind of heat, mm -hmm. like a, a heater in your, your RV, right? Mm -hmm. So anytime you can eliminate heat as a wasted uh, byproduct of using a battery, I mean, that, that's a great advantage. Okay, so this one will charge cooler, discharge cooler. Correct. More and efficient. You're getting more of the battery's power into whatever you're using instead of along the way it's being wasted on the wires or the conductors or the BMS or the welds on here. So more efficient battery. Cool. Overall. At the end of the day, both these batteries will deliver power. It's just a matter of how efficiently and for how long and how safely. Features. Can you turn it on and off? Can you connect it to an alternator or a regulator? Or can you use your, your Bluetooth app for, you know, BMS telemetry? Uh, right, so we think we have, you know, just a superior, better product. You get what you pay for, right? Yeah. And That's why it is cost more, because there's a lot more going on in here than you know, typical. There's definitely battery. a difference in the two batteries. All right, cool. All right. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Bye.